Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. Yes, the family hood. This is take two because someone had a meltdown. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. New so, vibes. But we didn't want to do a video and just like make content without addressing like mm. the elephant in the room. Yeah. Most of you probably know the gist of what's happened and we won't go into like major detail but we will tell yeah the outline of the story mm -hmm. brief update yeah in december late december mm -hmm. i caught covid went to a covid doctor after speaking to the track and trace team because i was pregnant obviously with cyprus yeah. and at that point the <clears> symptoms <throat> were still they were mild but i couldn't i couldn't um, keep any food down and I had temperature yeah like a fever. fever so like one minute I was shivering under my duvet and then I was eating lollipops and I know my body and I know when something's not right mm -hmm. so I went to the doctor and they did like a few tests I think it was my heart rate they did which was high and they basically thought I had sepsis, so... Um, they said, yeah, you need to go to A&E, basically. So um, we drove straight there, and they then told us that, because Grace is pregnant, the best place for her is to go to the maternity triage. Flew around there, and yeah, they basically said, look, you, you need to be admitted. And they said to me, like, if you're going to come in, you have to isolate with Grace from, like, here on, here onwards, basically. Yeah, we had our own room. Yeah. Um, Thank God. Yeah, and then my test results um, came back positive because I'd done um, like a drive-by mm -hmm. test. Yeah, I think it was like near Heathrow Airport. Yeah, it was positive. Mine was negative. Yours was negative, but I wasn't in the danger zone yet. I guess I needed more and more oxygen support, yeah. and I said to them like, "Take my baby out." So we were admitted on the twenty-first of December, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, by this Christmas Eve, basically, Grace was uh, starting to struggle. Which I don't remember. How are you feeling, Bubs? <coughs> <coughs> That's how I feel. Oh, I feet, <coughs> they, first of all, said I was dramatic. You thought I was being dramatic? Not dramatic, but Grace was like, you need to get a baby out. And obviously, he was due, meant to be due in February. And this is like late December. <clears throat> so I don't know, it was a bit like, you're not there yet, but obviously. Oh, I was there. Yeah, he was there. And they eventually listened. The do doctor team here, just want to get baby out today. It's Christmas Eve as well, by the way. Today is the day Baba is being born or delivered. Yeah. Exciting times. Yeah. Nervous a little. But it's all going to be all right. Love you, bub. Look how pale my face is. Don't worry about all of that. <laughs> You're beautiful. I swear, I've been sleeping for the last two, three nights. <laughs> Snacks galore. So I had a C-section. Surgeons were lovely. Yeah, Love that the whole... The anaesthetist. Anaesthetist, yeah. Love. No, that's Every... not her name. That's her... No, what, that is that <laughs> the name. Yeah, sorry. Yes. That whole experience was actually really not like really good. Yeah, really calm. Like, there was no not, panicking. Yeah, not traumatic at all. Nothing hurt. It was really calm, peaceful. Yeah. So how do you feel? Sore. But so much better. I can actually breathe. You had a C-section. Had a C-section. Unplanned. Borderline emergency non-traumatic mm -hmm. c-section it was actually a wonderful experience yeah it was good mm. maybe cypress is now earth side you just said his name for the first time i know cypress <laughs> seven <laughs> he's earth side and mama is resting he's resting in the nicu you did really well Didn't thank it? you I did good. Yeah, really good. Proud of you. Thanks. I, I was meditating you. the whole time. I know. And just breathing. Zoning in. Zoning out, even. You're a dad. And you're a mother. 
No I drama. Know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> drama. I can't talk yeah, anymore. Right. Anyway, love you. Love you. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. <laughs> so, how my C section? They put Cypress's head to my head. He got taken to the NICU. Yeah, literally straight away. And then all I remember is having him. Mm -hmm. You seeing the first time I saw your face. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, As you were delivering. Yeah. And then I remember saying goodbye to Lee at the, NIC the ICU doors. Yeah. But I guess I was just really struggling. Christmas Eve, I consented to um, be put into an induced coma. And I think they do that to give your body a rest, right? Yeah. Whilst they like, get you better. Yeah. So they initially tried you on a CPAP <coughs> mask, which is a better breathing mask. Um, and that you obviously wasn't getting the amount of oxygen you required. So yeah, they, they said they needed to put you under and to intubate you i think which is yeah. where they put the ventilator in your throat direct into your lungs mm -hmm. um so that would have happened on boxing day um they gave me the call and told me what was happening i think we're going to do a separate video about of your journey about my journey but i just say like <clears throat> at that time like it was obviously shocking and a bit like wow this is serious now but even then i thought like you'd be down for like a few days and then you'd be rested and like you'd start to feel better and <laughs> <laughs> it went to shit um yeah, he tried to bring me south. out a few times one time i had a physical fight with the nurses or tried to and one time i died well yeah if you put it bluntly like that yeah the first time they tried to wean you off the ventilator and your mm -hmm. sedation medicine mm -hmm. um and obviously you're a bit, um, what's the word? Disorientated. Disor yeah, you're disorientated when you come come out of a coma, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Grace tried to pull the ventilator from her mouth, which is obviously a natural thing you would do if something Love was that. in your mouth. No recollection of that whatsoever. So yeah, it wasn't safe. So they had to resedate Grace and then try again in a few days. So it was like, okay, cool. Like praying that the next time goes well. Um, it did not. Well, the next time they did do it, they got you out of the sedation, yeah. like successfully. And then you FaceTime me. You don't remember this? No. You FaceTime me, because um, the first thing you said when you woke up was, where's, where's my, my baby? Oh, okay. Luckily, I was in the NICU with Baba, so I showed Grace Cyprus quickly. Did you? Yeah. We had a little conversation. I was just trying to comfort you and just tell you that things are going to be was all right. Fine? Yeah from that phone call you obviously think okay cool like we're we're out of this now things are gonna you know grace is gonna get stronger and, and things like that and then yeah over the next few days things just didn't go to plan she wasn't as comfortable with the ventilator still in so they had to re-sedate grace again i think her oxygen levels dropped so dramatically that grace went into cardiac arrest after that phone call a few days later i believe yeah technically died for five minutes right for five around and this five is minutes. in like mid january mid jan to late jan cypress is now basically out of the nikki he's fine um died for five minutes and it was just basically touch and go multiple organ failure mm. dialysis i had inflammation on my heart i was basically in a really bad way yeah they gave me five percent chance of surviving obviously on so many drugs and medication mm -hmm. and then they i guess put in a trackie basically they didn't want to risk taking grace out of the sedation again so yeah they decided that it would be best for grace to have a tracheostomy where they make a small incision in your throat and put a ventilator directly into your lungs so yeah they called me had to get my consent for that because i'm grace's next of kin yeah luckily that went really well and the procedure was cool things slowly started to get better day by day mm -hmm. still up and down though because yeah she had like kidney failure and, and, and i was basically fucked mad because so much happened in between that moments where i'm on the phone to doctors me and grace's mum, are trying to get updates every day from doctors and they're obviously crazy busy in the um, ICU and 
yeah the communication was really poor and obviously you just want to know what's happening and yeah you're not getting updates as much as you'd want basically we'll talk more and more about things i guess in more detail mm -hmm. as i actually know what's happened because there are still parts that i remember so like wrong yeah um and lee has a diary basically and so mm. my sister and my mum of things that happen like day to day which i'm not ready to read through yet yeah. and um the icu keep a diary too so i'll eventually go back to icu and look at my file basically yeah. but that just won't be yet so we're telling this from like our perspectives without mm. kind of the whole story yeah. a brief timeline yeah during this whole time i was having the most traumatic dreams I've ever had in my life. There's just no words. It's all surrounding like sexual trauma, um, just loads of stuff. It was just horrific basically. Like it was like a continuous nightmare. And I knew that I was in a different dimension, um, but I knew that I couldn't wake up from it. And I knew that it was like so fucked because, and sorry for my swearing, but that's kind of the only word to describe it because like i flew in my dreams like i saw like spiritual beings and my dreams were basically my real life and my childhood but just really like twisted and dark and obviously all my subconscious like fears were playing out in my dreams but like, the last thing i remember is lee coming to rescue me and me um leaving hospital in real life i was in hospital and in my dreams i was also in hospital and then i woke up mm. i don't remember waking up um but i remember obviously not being able to speak because of the tubes not being able to move but i remember seeing like this red light on my toe and i was like what the fuck is that <laughs> and the nurse was like oh that's your um <laughs> like heart rate monitor mm -hmm. on your toe mm -hmm. because my nails were so long and obviously overgrown because I'd been in a coma for however long, like months. And this was in February, but yeah. I don't have any conscious memory until March. Weaning Grace off the sedation was such a slow process. Mm -hmm. and every day felt like Groundhog Day. It was like a repeat of the same same day over and over again for weeks it felt like yeah it was, and then they stopped say to me in the day and they would just yeah. let me at night time mm -hmm. and gave me like sleep medication and stuff and they said to get my lungs my lungs, lungs. my lungs stronger mm -hmm. was to keep me awake in the day yeah and then rest my lungs at night but i knew like after i woke up i wasn't worried because i knew i could swallow because i could swallow my own spit and I could feel the ventilator pushing my lungs to breathe, but then me breathing without them, because it was out of sync. But obviously very confused, I was hallucinating. Mm -hmm. um, well, I woke you were up, still on hard drugs. Yeah, I was on fentanyl. I woke up screaming that I was in Reading. Looking back, it was funny. I was like, Because oh, he was so, on FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so far like, away. Because I'm in Reading. And I was like, Grace, you're down the road. But like, I remember that. And I remember the relief and I said, mm. I was like to the nurse, like, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> I feel like after that, I just started getting better. Like very yeah. quickly. You, you, you made a breakthrough. Mm. I'm going to say like early March, yeah. maybe. Probably when I tweeted, I've tweeted March 8th. Okay. So I must have felt better because yeah. I wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't I wasn't going to tweet until I was like in the safety zone yeah got better and better all my infections went when you're in the mm. icu you just catch loads of infections so i was getting infection after infection and i didn't have covid anymore like i only right. tested covid positive once but it was like the infection from the tubes um stomach bugs just all the stuff you get in hospital mm -hmm. um and then once i got over that it was just basically bringing up all my mucus um yeah and then rehab one, on your lungs and yeah breathing working with rehab teams obviously when you're um lying down for so long you lose your muscle memory so i had to learn to sit up for context 
Grace couldn't move at one point. Mm. Like literally just your head. Yeah. But could always move my head. And everything like, else. I could tap my fingers. Like very lightly. And I couldn't speak. Yeah, you so couldn't speak. obviously I'm so traumatized. I already had PTSD beforehand. Um and then not being able to like run or scream or whatever when you've got a fight or flight mode kicking in mm. um was just horrific. Then it um, was horrible to witness as well. Yeah, I'd cry all the time, wouldn't I? And at this <clears throat> point, no one was allowed into hospitals. Mm -hmm. So that we couldn't really do anything for Grace. So I'm, we're always calling the hospital, making sure she's being looked after how she However, needs to be looked they after. Let, they, uh, they let a so. film crew in to film me in a coma. Cyprus is now awake and Listen, the battery went. It's absolute chaos around here. This is our life now. Where were we? They allowed press to come in but we'll save that for another time there's so much to say honestly it's, it's mad even though we're all still processing uh, yeah we did a swallow test to see if i could swallow so i could start um like eating and drinking basically started doing that obviously passed the test like i knew i would because i was swallowing my own spit one night my cough was really 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 bad I noticed there was like some red bits in my, I guess, like phlegm tube. And I just had this feeling that my body was rejecting the tracky. So the next day, I said to one of the doctors, just take it out, I know I can breathe. Um, and obviously I'd improved so much. And he agreed, basically. So he literally went and pulled out my tracky and I could breathe and it was the best I think I've ever breathed in my life. It was so mad to get that phone call. Though. I know because I called him and said my tracky is out and obviously I could speak, my voice is obviously husky and he couldn't believe it because it's such a big operation to put it in and then to take it out is so simple. Um, yeah, they just plucked it out. So oh. it came out, I had to just have... And then they just put a plaster over the hole in your <clears> neck. Like. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it will heal in a week. So then they reduced my oxygen um, to just like a little tube. But I think it was on like, I don't know, 10%. And then it went down to 7%. And then they left the like, little oxygen, oxygen? <laughs> oxygen tube in, just like the little portable mm -hmm. one. But didn't tell me they turned off the machine because they knew I had anxiety. Um, and then one day they were like, by the way, you've got no oxygen on at all. We're basically babysitting you. You can move to a normal ward. And this was within a month of me waking up basically. So it happened really quickly. And during that time, I basically kicked up a massive fuss that I was a new mum, I hadn't seen my baby wanted to see my boyfriend so during that time i was allowed daily visits with from lee um no three times a week or something i can't yeah, remember the beginning, yeah. and then um weekly visits with cypress went to the normal ward the same kind of visits still stood and then they basically said they think i'd benefit from going to rehab um, and not everyone gets the option to go to rehab um i think they just saw I was desperate to go home, I was motivated, um, I think because I was young maybe, I don't really know why <clears throat> I was eligible. And I said, I'm only going to rehab if I'm allowed daily visits and if I've got on suite, because I'd had such obviously difficult time and rehab was further away from hospital. I just didn't want to go really, I think I just mm. had enough, I was so traumatised. Anyway, I met the head guy from rehab. He was so nice. I said to him, what's going on? Oh, no, God, I'm trying to feed him. I He's said... grabbing my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Have kids, I said. <laughs> I said to um, my doctor that I wanted to be there for a month. Like, I was, I'd been in hospital for too long. I'm done. And he said, cool. Mm. Went to rehab, and I actually had a really good time. Well, you had a meltdown at the beginning, didn't you? Well, yeah, I had a panic attack because... I don't want to be there. Um, I'm very good with change. And obviously I'm so traumatized. I've still got a catheter in. Like no. there's all these things with being ill that no one talks about, like having to shit in a bed. Now let's be honest, 
Like I hadn't, I hadn't showered in five months. It's right, Bruce. Please. Anyway, got What's to happening? rehab. Mummy's talking. Right. Right. Mommy. I stood basically the next day. Within a week, I was walking. Um, with great difficulty, but I was walking. And baby steps. Yeah. That's when I felt like I was a mum because, mm. I mean, we're not talking about all the emotions and stuff about what's happened. We're kind of just giving you the facts and the timeline. Brief overview. Yeah. Because honestly, guys. But it's been hell. We could be here for hours. It's and we, I was in rehab for a month. Um, they wanted to keep me in longer, but I said I need to be home for my sister's birthday, which is May 9th. Um, and they said, look, medically you there's no reason for you to actually be in hospital um by this point i was off medication my catheter was out cyprus are you acting tired i said i need to go home mm -hmm. they agreed we went back to lee's dad's house because i couldn't do the stairs and he had a ground floor bedroom and bathroom we went back there and basically when i hear we're in a new flat yeah, we had to move <clears throat> Honestly. But now I can do the stairs. I can walk. Brilliant. Wow. Well done, bro. <laughs> well done. I basically live a normal life. Um, the only thing that's still an issue is this hand um, and this arm. Basically, I have nerve damage and it's really, really weak. Um, but I'm having physio still. Yep. And I still got a medical team basically that's helping me get back to full health. And that's basically the rundown of what's happened. There's so much more we yeah, could say. There is so There's much, so guys. much to say. Emotions, hospital care, stuff I loved, stuff that I hated, Just your perspective, everything. being in the press the whole fucking time, meeting the people that resuscitated me. Like, there's so much to say. Seeing him for the first time. <coughs> yeah, that's what it's like, Cyprus. <laughs> yeah, thank that's you. exactly yeah. what it's like. That's how we feel inside. But... <clears throat> I live turtle. Exactly, and out of everything, we have ourselves... A baby boy. A little boy. So this is Cypress Seven Williams, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And he's eight months old. Say hi. And <gasps> he is the light of our lives. Yeah. Um, miracle baba. Miracle baby with his miracle mum. And basically, <clears throat> I'm lucky to be alive, but also I'm not lucky. I feel like it just wasn't my time. Blessed, grateful. Yeah. But again, yeah. so much to say, so much. Yeah. Not working, making any money. No one mentions that, do they? Like, being ill and, like, you can't pay rent. Obviously, we're so grateful that we could, you know, still pay our bills. But there are some people that probably can't. I had to speak to Grace's accountant and, like, sort out all her bills and make sure everything's paid and she's not missing anything. Yeah. It's mad, honestly, guys. Like you can't register a baby without the mum being there. Yeah, all so of that. registered like literally last month or the month before. I would have had to have gone to court to like, because yeah, unmarried dads don't have rights basically. So <clears throat> we've gone through it. Yeah, sorry to bombard you with all of that. I, that must be like a lot to take in. <laughs> a lot to process. Yeah. But that's how we feel, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it is overwhelming. If you have any questions, leave them below because we're going to do a Q&A. Yeah. Because there's so much to say mm -hmm. that like we just can't say it all in one video. I think you should process what you need to process mm -hmm. and then sit down when you're ready. And I'll sit down and say my side of the story and what my perspective was on everything. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah, and like you being a first time dad yeah. without like me being there. We're on the <laughs> other side. Yeah. We're in a new place which we love. We We've love actually got a garden now. Massive garden. Bifold doors, yeah. three bedrooms, like two bathrooms. God is great, man. But yeah, this is our channel. Yeah, new new channel, new vibes. We're gonna talk about parenthood or familyhood. <laughs> Yeah, and just everything in between, yeah. man. Yeah, Cyprus growing up, um, and, oh my god, okay. 
you know what it's been like and you know hopefully we'll have another baby we are yeah it's not yet There's, whoa i want to show my recovery my rehab you know hospital visits i'm still under um care so yeah but we better go because honestly this boy yeah, he he's so demanding he is a menace i think i'm oh physically different emotionally different Spiritually yeah. different. I am definitely a different person. It's just wild. Hello, hello. So hello, hi, welcome. Love as always. Um, yeah, we'll try and keep this as frequent as possible. Yeah, we don't want to say like, oh, we'll upload on this day, just because we need to find yeah. our feet again. You know, being parents, it's not easy to always I mean, vlog and and just parent. Like that's difficult as it is. But we're, I love being a mum. We're winging it. Thank you so much for watching. We hope yes. um, you enjoyed this first little video. Thanks to everyone who prayed for grace mm -hmm. and like sent love in general. It's much appreciated. And yeah, this is our little family. I didn't cry. No. That's quite good because I always cry. So soon come. Um, we yeah, big love, man. Thank you. Appreciate so much. it. Bye. See you later.